Mr. Speaker, I appreciate that. This uh, uh, bill that's uh, the subject of this uh, rule that is about to come before us um, includes two tax increases, one on uh, uh, Section 199, which eliminates the uh, oil and gas industry's ability to take advantage of this, uh, rule, uh, this uh, provision within the law to increase their taxes over the next 10 years by some $13 billion. There's also some uh, uh, tweaking with the, uh, and that's a, an odd word to use when it raises $4 billion, but a tweaking with the, uh, the, the way foreign oil, foreign, oil and gas, foreign oil and gas income plays into the uh, computation of the foreign tax credit uh, that these companies could, uh, uh, could take advantage of. Both of these uh, violate the Unfunded Mandate uh, Reform Act provision on uh, uh, private initiatives and uh, therefore is subject to uh, this point of order and, and being waived. And so I think that uh, uh, favorable consideration of this point of order is, is in, uh, uh, in uh, where, the, where we should be going with respect to the private sector mandates uh, that are waived under this rule. So um, I would also at this point in time like to yield as much time as the gentleman from Arizona would like to uh, use, Jeff Flake. The gentleman from Arizona is recognized. I thank the gentleman for yielding. Um, as, as mentioned, there are, you could easily say that there are un unfunded mandates in the bill. You could also say that there's a particular earmark in the bill. Now, because the bill didn't go through regular order and we don't have a, a committee report to go along with it, there was not a certification that came saying that there were no earmarks in the bill. A particular concern um, is. Uh, a, a provision that would allow New York City to keep up to two billion dollars worth of empl the employees, or I'm sorry, the employer share of payroll taxes, and invest the funds in a transportation project. Now, this is not the first time we've seen this. The New York Liberty Zone tax credit earmark uh, was included in previous in a previous energy bill passed by the House, but it was removed by the Senate. Now. I think we can all quibble about where the benefits go on some of these things, but it's clear that the target here is New York City. It's a targeted tax provision, um, and it's what we typically refer to as an earmark in the authorizing bill. And, and I would say if it uh, looks like an earmark, acts like an earmark, it is one. And it shouldn't be in this bill unless there's some kind of certification or something that this is not an earmark. Uh, I just don't know how you can call it anything but that. This is just another example of how little impact uh, Congress's steps to reform the process have actually had in the day-to-day -day operation of the House. Um, for a point of order against an earmark to be rejected, the, the chairman simply needs to insert a statement into the record saying there are no earmarks in the bill, and then a point of order can't be lodged. Here we don't even have that kind of statement, and still we're saying that a point of order can't be lodged in this regard. So I, I, I would say that we ought to reject this bill for many reasons, not the least of which is uh, it's going to blow a, a $2 billion hole in the budget here for a limited specific tax provision uh, benefiting only one group uh, across the country. And with that, uh, I thank the gentleman for yielding, and uh, I'll yield back to the gentleman from from Texas. I thank my colleague for pointing that out. Uh, the Congressional Budget Office uh, on a similar, uh, almost exact bill, 2776, earlier in the year, clearly stated that these are unfunded mandates. They breach the threshold appropriate under the Unfunded Mandate Reform Act, uh, and a port of order should be uh, lodged, should be sustained against, uh, uh, against this bill. With that, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman reserves. Gentlelady from California. Mr.